In this tutorial, I'll walk you through every step I use to create this joystick. Let's go. Okay, press Shift A, Mesh, and add a plane. Press Tab to go into edit mode, and then press E and extrude it up. There we go. Tab to leave edit mode, go to your modifiers tab, add a modifier, and we'll be adding a bevel modifier. We change our segments to four, and then we'll decrease our amount to maybe zero or something like that. Yeah, that looks great. Um, select your item and then press Ctrl tool and add a subdivision modifier and then right click and shade auto smooth. And then we'll uh, create the actual stick. So we'll go into edit mode and go into face select, select the face here and then press shift S cursor to selected and then leave edit mode, press shift A mesh and add a circle. Press tab to go into edit mode, press one or the icon here to go into first select and then press S and we'll scale it down to something like that. Press F and fill and then we'll extrude it up like that. Perfect. And then press I to inset and we'll inset it somewhere there. And then we'll press Ctrl R to add loop cuts and then we'll add two, three, four loop cuts and then confirm those. And now in face select, select this loop with alt click and then press E and we'll extrude it down. And then we'll select this one and we'll press E and extrude it down. And then the middle face E and extrude it down. Now we'll select these faces, press G and Z. And we'll move those up and then these G, Z and we'll move those up as well. And then we can select this face here, press I to inset and then E and we'll extrude it up like that. And then now press A, S and we'll scale it down, S and Z, and we'll scale it down a bit in the Z axis. And then we'll move it into our object like that. And then we'll go to modifiers and we'll add a nice bevel modifier here as well. Change the segments to four and we'll decrease the amount to maybe .02. And then with Control 2, we'll add a subdivision modifier, right click and shade auto smooth. Yeah, that looks really nice. I'm gonna just make it a bit wider, a bit more like that. And then I'm gonna go and select the bottom face and I press G and Z to move it down a bit and move it in. Yeah, I think that looks perfect. Um, now we'll go here. Shift A and add a UV sphere, B and Z to move it up. Tap to go into edit mode and we'll scale it down. And here you can really play with your sizing. I want it to look a bit stylized and silly, so I'm gonna have it a tiny bit bigger than it should be. Press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier, right click, shade auto smooth. We'll create the buttons now. So press Shift A, mesh and add a circle. G and X and we'll move it to the side, tap to go into edit mode, scale it down. Now we'll press F to fill, E to extrude it up. And then here we'll press I to inset. And then E to extrude it up again. Then go into edge select by pressing two on your keyboard or click the icon here. And then with control B, we'll add a nice bevel to make it a nice rounded button. There we go. And then press control two to add a subdivision modifier. Go back into edit mode, go into face select, select the bottom face, and I press I to inset and inset it twice. And then we'll add a, add a modifier bevel, and then we'll move that above our subdivision modifier, and we'll change the segments to four. And then we can change the amount to 0 0.02. There, that's a nice button. Right click, shade auto smooth. And then now we'll put it in position. So press uh, one on your numpad or press open your view menu with the tilde key and then we'll go into front view and then with G we can place it on top of there. And then with seven on your numpad or through your view menu, you can go to top view and then press there and we'll see now that it's too big. So we'll go into edit mode, press A to select all, S and shift Z to scale it down in everything but the Z axis. And then maybe a tiny bit S and Z and we'll scale it down. Just keep scaling it until it looks nice for you. Down a bit. Let's have a look. 
there. I think I might want to scale these down a tiny bit. And just make it look nice so it fits perfect for your piece. Doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. There, just like that. I think that looks pretty nice. And I'll go back into front view and I think we're gonna add a mirror modifier now. So go to your modifier step and then we'll add a mirror. And then for your mirror object, select the base of the joystick. There we go. And then we have two nice buttons. Okay, then we'll go into front view. Press shift C to reset your um, 3D cursor. And then from front view, press shift A and we'll add a camera. Then press G and Y and move your camera backwards. Press zero on your numpad or through your view menu, go into the camera view, go into your output settings and we'll change the resolution to 1920 by 1920. And then maybe GZY is moved back a tiny bit. Okay, now we'll select our joystick and we'll move it in position in the middle of our piece. And I press R twice and we give it a nice rotation. I think this looks pretty, pretty cool like that. And then move it a bit to the middle. Yeah, that's great. Okay, let's uh, put it out in a cable. So if we select our base, go into edit mode. And then we'll select our back base. And then press Shift S and then cursor to selected. You can leave edit mode and then press Shift A curve and we'll be adding a path. Now we can go into top view and then press tab to go into edit mode and then we can basically move the beginning of the path right on our 3D cursor and then now we can give it a nice cable so you can just move around all these verts and then with the last one selected if you press E you can keep on extruding it and making a nice swirl in there there like that okay so now we'll go into camera view and then we'll give it some height as well so if we press R and X, maybe there and then G and Z, and then basically just like throw around these verts a bit vertically as well. Make a nice and interesting look for your cable. It much of a curve there. Okay, that looks nice. Then with the curve selected, We'll go to the data settings and then in geometry there's depth and we'll increase that or some thickness in our cable there that's perfect okay that looks great so now we'll add a plane for our background so press shift a add a plane press rx 90 to rotate it and then gy move it all the way back go back into camera view press tab and scale it up so it covers your background Perfect. Okay, and then we'll go to our render settings. We'll change our engine to cycles, device to GPU compute. We'll change our viewport samples to 128 and our render samples to 512. We'll scroll down, go into color management, and there we'll change our look to high contrast. Now we'll press Z and we'll go into render view, start adding some lighting. So press Shift A, light and add an area light, G and Z to move it up. Then press period and change your pivot point to 3D cursor. Then press R, X, 30 and minus. And then we'll go into the light settings. We'll change the power to maybe a hundred. And we'll change the shape to disc and we'll change the size to two. Just like that, then we'll press Shift D, R, Z, 120 to duplicate the light and rotate it. And then press R, X twice. And then we can shine it from the side, G and Z twice to move it back a tiny bit. And then Shift D, R, Z, 120 again. And then we can just decrease this power to 60. There, that looks great. Okay, and then we'll press period and change our pivot point to median point. Press Shift A, light, and add another area light. Press R, X, 90 to rotate it, and G and Y, and move it back. And just like that, I think I'm going to move it a tiny bit closer, and then we'll increase the power to 400. And then our shape to disc, and then the size to 2. There, that gives us a nice uh, 
backlight lighting. He said, move it back a tiny bit. There, that looks awesome. Okay, now we'll start adding some materials. So we'll start with our background. Select your background, go to the material tab, add a new material, we'll name it background, and then we'll change our base color to AED8E7. And now we'll change our base. So select the base, and then we'll change the color. Here, we'll name it dark base. We'll change the color to 4C, 4C, 4C. And I'm gonna change the roughness to 0.3. Then we'll have a bit of a lighter base as well in the middle here. So add a new material and we'll call it lighter base. And that base color is going to be 6F, 6F, 6F. And our roughness is also going to be 0.3. Now I wanna change this part of the stick to metal. So if you uh, press tab and go to edit mode, you select everything, press Z and go toggle X-ray. And you can select the top face here. You have face uh, select active. And then go into select, select more, less, and then select more. And then there you have the whole stick selected. Then add another material slot here to the right. Press the plus, add a new material, click assign. We'll call it metal. We'll change our color to a slight bluish color which will be here if we go there and we'll press a b b b c5 and then we'll change metallic all the way to one and then we can leave edit mode okay perfect then we'll change our cable color which is going to be there cable and our base color will be AC, AC, AC with a roughness of 0.3. And then we'll make the top of the stick red, call it red. We'll change our color to FF6750. And I want a roughness of 0.3 there as well. Now for the buttons, and they can start off with having the same color as this lighter base. So select the button and press shift and select the lighter base and press control L M to link the materials. So now you have the same materials on the buttons as you have on this stick. Um, you can select the metal and press the minus to remove it. And then now we'll add a nice yellow color to these buttons. So press tab to go into edit mode. We can toggle x-ray and then select our top face. And then once again, go to select, select more, more, and then press shift R until you have the whole top selected. Then add a new material slot, add a new material, assign it. And then we can leave edit mode. Now we'll change these material settings, which will be a yeah, nice yellow color. So that's going to be FFD768. And I want to add a slight emission to this, a slight glow effect I think could look nice. So if you scroll down, we can change our emission color to BE8D00. And then just an emission strength of something like 3 I think looks pretty nice. And now we'll change our world colors. So then we'll go to our world tab and then go to color. And that color is going to be 85959B. There we go. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you found any part of it unclear or you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you decide to share your artwork on Instagram, don't forget to tag me, I'd love to see your creations. If you found this tutorial helpful, consider supporting the channel by subscribing and liking the video. And remember, practice makes perfect, so go ahead and experiment with the things you've gained. Thank you for watching and good luck.